I grew up in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, you know, mom, dad, sister, they've been married my whole life. Um, I, I grew up in a household where we went to church every weekend. I wouldn't really call it a Christian household, um, considering the things I've learned since then, like what a Christian household looks like. Um, but we went to church, you know, like everything seemed normal. We went to vacation Bible school and like summer camps and um, lots of activities with church. Um, and, you know, growing up, like, it was just a normal American household or whatever. Um, I guess I got to probably when I was like seven and I started playing football. Um, and that kind of took me into my high school years of like memories. So I remember like, I guess I was like 14 years old and um, I was playing football in high school. Um, and at the same time as that, I started really getting into church. Um, you know, I had a new youth pastor. He was introducing me to all new kinds of scripture, you know, like um, teach me about like what the, what the you know, where the disciples went through, like when, you know, when they were in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, like all just kinds of things I'd never thought of or never been exposed to. Um, and in that, you know, like I said, I really started falling in love with Jesus. But someone came up to me like, yo, you know, why are you such a Jesus freak? And instead of that, like resonating with me and like being like a compliment or like something to be like joyous about, which today, like, you know, I'm all about, like, um, it hurt and it made me feel like I was lesser than, you know, not, not manly enough, like not like strong enough. And I backed out, I freaked out. I quit going to youth group. Um, before I even graduated high school, like I quit going. I quit going to the events. I didn't go to church on Sundays. You know, my dad had a falling out with, with some of the church members, which was, it was petty, really. Like, you know, everyone who goes to church isn't what you would expect. Um, I quit playing football because around the same time that I found out I was a Jesus freak, I also found out that I wanted to be a photographer. So I quit playing football because it was either photography or football just because of um, things I had to commit to or whatever. Um, my mom lost her job, so there was one, one income in the household. Um, and when she lost her job, I picked up number two. Um, I, got a, I got a job at a camera shop, uh, started doing as much photography as possible. Um, literally like four or five days a week I was doing photo shoots bringing in you know anywhere from like 50 bucks to 80 bucks a piece which sounds tiny but when you only have one income in the household like it's a lot you know I started doing all kinds of stuff um, you know I would do weddings or sports I worked for a local newspaper um, I did nude portraiture I did uh, calendars I did um, you know <laughs> photo shoots for dudes who sold weed, like all different kinds of stuff. Um, and what that did is it introduced me to a group of people who honestly um, changed my life. Now, some of them I know changed my life for the better and some of them maybe not so much. Um, but I started doing music videos. It's crazy like how it happened. Like, I uh, guess I was 18, it was maybe 2010, 2011, so like 17, 18, uh, like really soon after I, I quit, you know, doing fo football, like I started doing all these different things. And then one day I find myself in the basement with some of my friends, my, my now friends, um, and they were like, man, you know, we got this guy who does music videos, but like we need them done like faster. Like, can you make music videos for us? I was like, no, no, I'm not doing video. Like videos first of all photography is hard as it is like there's so much editing goes into that but like videos like I don't even know where to start I don't have the programs I don't have the gear I don't have any microphones they're like no 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 just do it and I was like alright cool a week after that I filmed my first real music video what I would call real music video it was a cypher it was a one take like literally no cuts we did it like eight times in a barber shop like I had to like choreograph the people for them to walk different ways or whatever um, after that hit the internet, it was like within a week, there was like 3,000 hits. Like it was crazy. And then I get contacted by the manager uh, of an artist who was signed to Young Money. And he's like, we're coming to Fredericksburg, which I have no idea why you'd come to Fredericksburg for that, but they came to Fredericksburg and they asked me to, to film two music videos. I was like, okay, cool. So next thing I know, I got, you know, a legit like signed music artist within three weeks of clicking record on my camera for the first time that I'm doing a music video for. And it's like, all this time, it's like just things are just coming in whirlwind and even more so like, I'm not thinking about Jesus at all. He's nowhere in my sights, nowhere in my mind. Um, you know, different things are happening like, you know, tobacco, alcohol, marijuana, like they all enter the picture. Um, 
and you know, like things just just start getting crazy. Um, I inter- I get introduced to this guy who owns a uh, uh, that night with with that that second music video. I get introduced to a guy who owns a photography studio. In New York, um, aside from the chaos and the craziness and the beard that was out of control and the gut that was out of control, just like not living healthy, just every single day working from like 6 a.m. to like, you know, 3 a.m. and then like doing it again the next day, like on drugs that would keep me awake for three, four days at a time where I'd see like robots and cows crossing the road, like all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, there was this, this, this girl who was in my life. Um, and, and it was crazy because like we had been talking probably two years before was when we had like tried to have something and um, and I just one day just randomly texted her out of nowhere I was like hey you know how are you doing and like from that moment moving forward she somehow managed every day if not every day every other day to kind of talk about Jesus to put God's word into my life to ask me about church to ask me about this or that I um, decided to get rid of all my music and start listening to like uh, you know, Christian music, even if it was Christian hip hop, I was trying to find out some way to kind of, to kind of really like live it up. One day I decide that I don't feel right here anymore. I don't feel right in New York. I don't feel right in this job, in this position, in this house, in this, like everything about New York just feels bad. Uh, I let my boss know like all these different things. And I was on my, on my way from New York City to Fredericksburg, Virginia. So six and a half hours of driving. It was probably 11 at night. I got home. I knew I needed to make money, um, so I went back to what I knew how to do, freelance photography and freelance filmmaking. Um, what sucked was my six months in New York instilled in all the people who wanted to work with me that I was no longer available to work with them. So this huge wave I was riding before New York where it was literally day in, day out, like maybe like between six to ten inquiries a day. Like people wanted to f- do photos with me, do videos with me, um, even just have me around or, or whatever because they knew a camera would be with me. You know, like they were, just, they were just flying in. But when I moved to New York, I kept, you know, there were so many replies of I'm not doing it anymore, I can't do it, I live in New York, blah, 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 that it became like, okay, he, he's not doing this anymore. Lindsay, the girl uh, who I had reconnected with in New York, she started taking me to church every weekend. Um, there's all different kinds of new things that are happening in my life. I decided, hey, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna serve Jesus stuff, I'm gonna be involved here. I have to be all in. I have to. I'm putting all, everything in God, like all my chips. Like I'm serving the house holy, um, or I'm serving the house fully. And what that looked like was every weekend serving, you know, getting in there early, setting up cameras, running cameras, you know, filming the pastor or being on one of the other cameras that aren't like crucial, but like, you know, I was being trained into this because it's one thing to do recorded media and there's nothing to do broadcast. It's completely different. Um, And that took me to a place where I felt confident enough. I mean, honestly, I had a lot of confidence, more more confidence than I probably should have had in myself um, just from, track records and stuff like that you know like at this point at this point you know me serving on a Sunday morning in this church I had I had had music videos on BET VH1 music choice you know like uh, M, you know MTV2 like ev- everything that my dreams as a teenager like all the boxes were checked since then like so much has changed um, I went from serving at life point to um, to being a contractor for film. Um, I went to contracting at LifePoint to being a, f- a long-term sub while my partner um, was out on maternity leave. Um, and soon after that, um, I was asked to be a full-time employee um, at LifePoint Church. Um, there's been so much growth. Um, that season, literally, of me coming back from New York to working for LifePoint like, was such a tough season, but such a short season. It's so weird, like, when God has a plan for you, He moves, and He doesn't allow anything to get in, into, into the way of, of His path. Um, there was many opportunities where the, where the enemy was, was trying to work against what God had planned, and, and He just shut him down. Um, you know, LifePoint sent me 
literally all over the world through combination of you know hip hop politics and Jesus like I've seen over over 50% of the United States and like 4% of the world like it's crazy like I've got to see go to Israel one day you know and like see like where God's word began like the root of of of, of his people um, and on the next day be out in the middle of some rural village in India getting to see the ends of the earth where his word's reaching like God like being faithful um, or just obedient or just not putting myself first I feel like in most situations like God's blessings have just been ridiculous that girl that believed in me in New York um, in like three weeks I get to marry her like it's just crazy like it brings tears to my eyes just thinking of like all the goodness and the faith and the just the blessings that God brings like I literally get to wake up every day and do what I love and serve God like while I do it like I have access to to not only whatever kind of camera gear I want or you know whatever but like I get to be I get to have influence you know on volunt like on 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 direction of creativity um, I get to interface with volunteers I get to work with th literally thousands of people I get to enter into campuses every weekend and see life change